Good morning, kiddos. Happy Wednesday, May 13th. It is the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Remember that May is a month of Mary, and Fatima is one of the feast days that we celebrate this month. So I hope that you can do something with your family today to celebrate this really important feast of Our Lady. Now today, we are not gonna do our tasks. We're gonna have another day where we talk about a Greek guy, okay? And today's guy is super cool. Last summer, my husband and I went on a little trip to Idaho and we ended up at this museum and there was a whole display on this guy because he did so much. So I have some pictures that I took of statues and his inventions and all kinds of things, all right? Now he has a cool name. His name is Archimedes, all right? Here is a picture of a statue of Archimedes. Check that guy out. There he is. All right, so you can see he's holding a scroll. He had many writings about the things he discovered. And he was born in 287 BC, which is about 300 years before Christ. And he was born in Syracuse, which was a Greek city-state on today's island of Sicily. So we have Greece, and then we have the little boot of Italy, if you remember that on a map, and Sicily's an island there. So that's where Archimedes lived. And he was a very famous mathematician and inventor. In fact, so famous that even in his day, many people knew who he was, and perhaps he was even the most famous of mathematicians and inventors. And there are lots of stories about him because of that. Now, not all of them are written down. Some of them have been told. We're not sure they're 100% accurate, but they still teach us really interesting things, even if they're not all the way true. Okay, so here's one story about him. So Archimedes was close with the king of his city-state, okay, Helion. And Helion had just ordered a brand new crown, and he wanted it made of pure gold. But when he got it, he had this feeling that the man who made the crown, the craftsman, had, had gypped him, had ripped him off, had made it part silver and part gold so that it didn't cost him as much money, but he charged the king all the money as if it were gold, okay? So the king is sitting there, he has this brand new crown, and he wants to know for certain whether or not this crown is made out of gold. So he gets a bunch of the smart guys that are around and says, figure this out for me. So the story goes that Archimedes was thinking about this for several weeks, thinking and thinking, how can I figure out if the king's crown is actually gold or not. And then he went to the baths. And back then they didn't really have baths in all their homes. They had baths that were kind of like public swimming pools. So Archimedes was going to get in the water and he noticed that when he got in, the water went up. And maybe you've noticed this. Think of the difference of if you put, say, an elephant in your bathtub, how much water would come out versus your baby brother. Okay? So the size and the force and the weight of what's going into the water affects how much water comes out. Now, Archimedes thought of this and they say that he jumped out of the bathtub and went running, screaming, Eureka, I have found it, okay? But he went to the king, Helion, and said, I know how we can figure out if your crown is all gold. And see, silver, which is what the king thought the man had used, weighs more than gold. So that would mean if we put the same amount of silver and gold in the water, the silver is going to push out more water, okay? So here's what Archimedes did. He took a certain amount of water and he put in the gold that the crown should have weighed, and then he put in the crown, and the crown pushed out more water, and that meant the crown was made partially out of silver and the king had been ripped off. And I'm not sure what he did, but I'm guessing the man who made that crown was severely punished, if not killed. Okay, so that's one story. And this is called the Archimedean Principle, Archimedes Principle, and it is about water and how it's displaced or moved by depending on what is put in the water. Does that make sense? So you could do this, maybe if mom and dad will let you fill up the sink or the bathtub, you could put different objects in there and see how the water rises differently depending on what you put inside the water. Okay, so that's one cool experiment that you could do today if you have time. Now, he made many other discoveries and inventions. This one I'm about to show you is still used in some places today. This is called the Archimedes screw. So I'm gonna show you, and I know, I'm sorry, the light is never perfect for these pictures. So there's the screw, and this is so cool. They use this in some countries today, and you just turn the top, and it will actually move something like water from the bottom. 
and you're just sitting there turning. You don't have to pull the water out. You just sit and turn and it will pull the water up for you. So in some countries where they don't have the same plumbing that we do, they can use these screws to get water out of their rivers or lakes. Super cool, okay? Uh, another one is levers. And I think those of you who are in my class last year will remember that a lever is something that balances, okay? Kind of like a teeter-totter we talked about. Okay, and Archimedes said, give me a fulcrum, that's the part in the middle that it balances on, and a lever, and I will move the world. Okay, he knew that this simple machine could teach him tons of things. And he loved to just sit and try to figure out relationships. So he would take his fulcrum and his lever and he'd put different shapes, different geometric shapes on the ends and just discover things. What was more, what was less, okay? So that was another thing he did. He loved using those. He also, oh, he discovered a lot of things about a sphere and a cylinder. So if you remember, our sphere is our ball shape. And the cylinder is the one that looks like a can. And he found out exactly the relationship between a sphere and a cylinder. So much so, and he loved this discovery so much, that they have a picture of a sphere inside a cylinder, and he has that on his tombstone. Because he loved it. Okay? So he found out those relationships. He also loved to figure out things with spirals, and he loved measuring distances, and how they grew, and all this. But it was really hard to draw a spiral. So he invented something to draw a spiral. And this is so cool. Maybe you can find a way to do this today. If you can, I want you to send me a video, okay? Now this was at the museum that we visited and it's a spinning disc, if you can see it. Oh dear. Okay, and if you look, there's a marker there and there's a spiral drawn. And this is so cool because all that happened is you started spinning the disc, so it was just going around and you put your marker in the middle and just drew a straight line like you were drawing a line out to the outside. And as you were doing that, the plate was moving and it drew a spiral for you. So I just stood there and I did this. And I drew that awesome spiral. Isn't that cool? So you need a plate that's spinning constantly. And I'm not sure where you get this at home. This might be the problem. Unless you can have a plate that you can hold and maybe your brother or sister could spin it and you could slowly draw your line out and then see if you can draw that spiral, okay? Um, he also talked about some regular geometric solids, which we'll talk about at math today. And then he also had some things for war, and one of them was a war claw. So it was like this giant claw that they could have come down on a crane of sorts, and it would literally like pick up a boat of an attacking army and just flip it into the water. So it'd be like a crane, here comes the claw, drop, <laughs> and it would pick up the ship and just dump it into the ocean. It was cool. And then another thing he did, this is the last one I wanna show you right now, is these parabolas. Now a parabola is a shape like this. If you think about cutting off part of a sphere, okay, so it's like a cupped shape. And in the museum, there were two of these. They were really big. You can see that's my husband's shadow right there. Okay, they're giant, and then they have these really small metal things sticking out of them. And you could have these across a room. We were in a room where other people were talking. And if I whispered onto the metal piece in the middle and I said, hello, he could hear my whisper from his metal piece all the way across the room. Okay, so he figured out this perfect sound traveling between these two parabolas so that you could hear whispers. It was amazing. Amazing. Okay, so those are just some of the things that we know about Archimedes. People loved Archimedes so much that people still studied him and used his ideas thousands of years later, like Leonardo da Vinci, okay, who maybe some of you will remember. He invented the bicycle, he invented the parachute, he did these incredible paintings, he thought about airplanes before there were airplanes, okay. Um, and then Galileo, who is the man who with finality said the sun is the center of our solar system, not the earth, because a lot of ancient people believe the earth was the metal. Okay. So those are some of the things he did, some of the people who learned from him. And he was so amazing that even with his death, people said a story about his death and they knew that his thinking was so important to him that here's what they say. Rome was attacking Syracuse in about 213 BC. And that's true. So that's not make-believe. We know that Archimedes was still there. He was an old man, but he was still helping with the fighting, probably getting his claw going. They had um, a story about 
him taking rays of the sun to light things on fire. And they say that one of the Roman soldiers came to him and said, we're taking you to our leader. And Archimedes was on the beach drawing circles. And he said, do not disturb my circles. He didn't even care about the guy coming to get him. And he just said, don't disturb my circles. And then he was killed. So like he was learning till the last moment. And that legend, while it might not be true, certainly teaches us how much he thought and how much time he spent thinking. And that in his last moments, that's what he wanted to do with his time. All right, in the next video, I'm gonna show you a project we're gonna do for Archimedes. And then in the third video, that's three, we will do a cool math project that you might have to work on for a couple of days, okay? All right, I'll see you in a minute.